Machen wir mal Play. Chapter 1. Ich plane auch mehrere Kapitel. Bin ja gespannt. Das sieht doch schon mal ein bisschen mehr nach Horrorspiel aus. Alles ein bisschen matschiger, alles ein bisschen dreckiger, alles ein bisschen dunkler. Oh, das, ah, da guck mich doch direkt was an. Ja, das bringt ja nichts, ich brauche noch ein Ei. Lenzflärme gefunden. Oh lol. Ich dachte, jemand spielt abgestürzt. Oh, Röhren. Müssen wir da durch? Oder ist das Deko? Wir sind in den Backroom gelandet. Oh, okay, erschreck mich nicht so. Mann, ja, tu ich. Wohin? Dann gucken wir uns mal an, wie das Spiel gemacht wurde. Warte mal. Dann erklärt er uns das. Er hat ja anscheinend das Spiel gemacht. Wie gesagt, ich weiß, es wurde innerhalb einer Woche gemacht. Und halt, er hat selber nicht wirklich viel Erfahrung. Warte mal, ich mache euch Untertitel an. Kann ich hier... Wie kann ich die Untertitel einstellen? Ich nutze sie eigentlich nicht. Das ist ja jetzt kein, 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 kein Deutsch. Äh, Untertitel, Englisch. Automatisch übersetzen ins Deutsche. Deutsch. Er erklärt uns jetzt, wie er das gemacht hat. Das ist doch schön. Das ist doch praktisch. Garden of Ban Ban, the indie horror game that's been taking the internet by storm. You've probably seen it before, and if you haven't, you've seen this bird. Because it's okay. seen you. So Garden of Ban Ban is what's called a mascot horror game, led by the likes of Bendy, Poppy, Choo Choo Charles, Friday Five Bad. All of these games take friendly childhood characters and situations and turn them into demonic nightmares. I could talk for days about how your childhood being corrupted is a popular idea in horror right now, but I'll save that for another video. Garden of Ban Ban attempts to do the same, taking you to an abandoned daycare where you have to run from giant mascot characters made of Play-Doh. While the idea itself isn't super original, I don't see a problem with it. If you have some good ideas for character designs and story, there's some really interesting things you could do with this genre. But what a lot of people are upset about with Garden of Ban Ban is the character design, lack of gameplay, and overall quality of the game, calling it low effort. But let's face it, the first game can be beaten in under five minutes without any major glitches, and only two months yeah, after they cool. released the first game, they released the second. Now this video is not an attack on the creators whatsoever. In fact, I've talked with them a few times and they seem pretty chill. Hi guys. In fact, I think Garden of Ban Ban 2 was a major step up from Garden of Ban Ban 1. Yeah, Ideally, the Euphoric Brothers, the developers of the game, will be able to take criticism from the first two chapters and continue to get better. Hopefully by chapter 4 or 5, we're looking at a beautiful game. That being said, there's been a lot of drama about the game lately. Calling out content creators, arguments on if people should be able to refund their game, and uh questionable games they've made in their past. But I'm not Hello? here to talk about the drama. I mean, All that comes from the up. idea that people think the game is low effort that it's easy to just slap it together. Today, we're gonna test that. Is it possible to remake the first Garden of Ban Ban game in under a week? Now to make this challenge a little bit harder, I selected someone with zero, and I mean zero game development experience. Please welcome our special guest. Me, I I it's me. set some ground rules. In one week, I have to make a horror game based on the original Garden of Ban Ban, taking you from the entrance to the game to a short encounter with Jumbo Josh, yeah, this uh, big green guy. In this process, I have to teach myself coding with okay, blueprints, friends. level layout and design, basically every single thing that has to do with game design. Layout this will primarily be learned all through Oder free YouTube tutorials me. online. I didn't gather a list of the tutorials I watched as I did this, but shout out to everyone that makes Unreal tutorials. You guys are insane. One important factor of this is if you look at the credits for the first Garden of Ban Ban, you're going to find that the majority of the assets and models used for the game were actually downloaded from a website called Sketchfab. This is perfectly legal yeah, and valid in game development, but we're going to play by the exact yeah. same rules. Kurz, Anything... Kurz Pause, das ist auch was ich viel mitgehe. Ich habe es generell bei, bei vielen äh, Indie-Projekten jetzt der Fall gewesen. Ich weiß nicht warum, aber viele kreiden es Leuten tatsächlich an, wenn die Assets und so ein Shit einfach über Third Party nutzen, über Sketchfab und so weiter. Ich meine, genau dafür sind die da. Man muss es halt äh, richtig ähm, halt äh, gucken, ob die Lizenzen so weiter sind. Ja, aber gerade bei Sketchfab und so Geschichten hat man ja meistens dann auch die Rechte für Commercial Use, also für, für das Nutzen für, für Finanzprojekte. 
das klingt komisch, für Sachen, die man halt verkaufen kann. Ich weiß nicht, warum das jetzt so ein riesen Ding geworden ist, dass viele hingegangen sind. Ja, du hast sie nicht selber gemacht, du darfst sie nicht nutzen. Also nämlich dafür gibt es ja diese Sachen. Finde ich irgendwie ein bisschen seltsam. Das wollte ich nur mal, wollte ich nur mal erwähnt haben. Das ist mir auch aufgefallen bei vielen Spielen, wo dann gemeckert wird. Ja, wir haben die Sachen ja nicht selber gemacht. Die ist ja doch nicht so schlimm. Dafür gibt es ja solche, solche third party dinger I can get a license to for commercial use, be it paid yeah, or free from Sketchfab can be used in my game as long as it's credited in the credits menu. Yeah. This helps out a lot so that I'm not learning Blender the entire week because honestly, 3D modeling is an art form in itself. But with that aside, I started everything out late Saturday night. I was watching the streamer awards on one monitor when I decided, hey, I kind of want to learn Unreal Engine. One tutorial about level design that I was like half paying attention to yeah, while watching nice. the streamer awards. And I have this screenshot of a theoretical remake of the game. I posted this work on Twitter just for funsies asking what would the game look like if it had this level of detail detail throughout the entire thing to which Twitter replied with okay you do it I woke up the next morning <laughs> to the tweet blowing up and I made the decision that I was going to spend that Sunday till the next Sunday solely working on the game which yes does mean that I spent my entire spring break in my junior year of college making the funny bird game right off the bat I knew I wanted to put my own spin on the game one thing that really bugged me in the base game were these murals that they had on the wall it's pretty common yeah, to see like true. character and like phrase vinyl or like painted lettering up on walls of like schools and stuff but something about like the reuse of these basic character renders and the way they're scaled up and also just like the out of place weird like text bubbles that are everywhere it just wasn't my vibe when i was playing through the game so we decided to switch those to actual painted murals and posters during this time we also decided to redesign some of the characters that you see in this chapter yeah, and while i am remember. studying graphic design character drawing isn't really my thing oh. <laughs> so i got my friend pincer prod to do some oh, redesigns okay. of the characters and we kind of talked through yeah, stuff and they came up with some really cool renders i tossed those onto posters wow. that i designed and honestly they turned out pretty cool like i said we redesigned some of the characters because our mentality was if you're gonna have these mascots in like a children's area they probably shouldn't look like eldritch horrors <laughs> we also thought it'd be <laughs> kind of cool if they all had a purpose outside of just existing to entertain the kids so with jumbo josh we had him become this really like cool. chef character that promotes healthy <laughs> eating in the original game he talks about eating fruits and veggies to grow big and strong like him bruh so we thought it would be fitting to make him a chef and you know promote oh. healthy eating then with opila we decided to make her into this fun pink bird who would promote getting a healthy amount of sleep you know eight hours a night which i definitely did not get making this video this all stems from the idea that if we theoretically would do chapter two the whole area with the baby chicks would be turned into a kind of nursery and she'd be in charge of that but with the first chapter it's more about getting enough sleep to be able to play all day While while we were working on these redesigns, I continued to build up the lobby. I did my best to recreate the look of the original game while putting my own spin on it. One thing that I thought would be cool is to have this like little outdoor scene at the front entrance. I think it really adds some depth and really shows that this is an actual building and not just like some void that you're running around in. On top of that, I really liked the lighting that came through. I think it really set up the scene very well. Speaking about lighting, one thing I noticed with the original game is that it's all super brightly lit. Yeah, I decided for our version we would go for more of a really allowing for more darkness and even some pitch black areas in the game. But if you're gonna have pitch black areas, you need a way for the player to be able to navigate that. So one of the first things I coded in was a flashlight. Now there's a lot of little things about game development that you don't think about until you try to make your first game. It's not as simple as add flashlight to player. It's a yeah, lot of boring stuff that you probably don't care about. But that's what this entire project was, just character. trying to figure out how yeah, to do stuff, watching countless YouTube tutorials. And by the end, I was able to do a lot of this stuff without Googling it and just kind of figuring it out myself. Now you may say, Mason, why is the flashlight in the left hand? Shouldn't the item be in the right hand? I got you. So no, in the plan of the game, we were going to fully I'm remake it with the drone the mechanic. And if you guys know from the original game, the remote controller for the drone is actually in your right hand. So the idea is that you I have your left happen. hand for the flashlight, right hand for the drone controller to move the drone around. But like I said, this is my first time really ever coding. So within a week period, there wasn't a shot that I was going to get the drone mechanic up and working okay, the way it should. So I kind of just wrote it out of the game. The drone is still in the game. It's just in a closet with a note next to it saying that it's down for repair. Yeah, and a lot of the buttons are here. still in their original well. spot in the game. They're just not functional. I set this all up so that this video does well and I have enough requests to like go ahead and expand the game into new chapters or remake this first chapter entirely. I could spend a couple weeks 
tweaks, getting the drone mechanic to work properly. But for now, players are just gonna move around with keys and key cards. Stop. Beyond this point and this classroom, I do a lot of redesigning. There's a lot of stuff that isn't in the original game or has changed. So if you guys don't wanna get spoiled for any of the new stuff, either check out the game with the link in the description, assuming it hasn't been taken down, or check out my no commentary playthrough of it, which I'll also link in the description. Also, ich lade das auf good? YouTube, dann packe ich es in die Beschreibung. Okay, the playground! So in the original Man, game, I know what they're machen. going for with the whole look of yeah, this playground. It's traurig. supposed to have these big, like, rubber plastic things that kids can climb on. I remember playing on that kind of stuff as a kid. But as I was doing some research into more liminal and creepy spaces, I kind of got settled and I had this vivid memory of the play sets that you'd see at, like, McDonald's back in the day. They'd have these big pipes and like, super. you'd have to crawl through them. And honestly, they kind of scared me at times. I don't know if I'm like claustrophobic and I just don't know, but like something about being in there and like a kid comes up behind you, it's scary. So I decided to have my version of the playground focus more on that. I of course did make a rough recreation of the wooden playground that they have in the base game. But I added all of these 3D pipes around have, the map to give the illusion that it's this massive play fallen. area that kids can kind of crawl I'm through better. and go to different parts of the facility. In. I also stacked a bunch of the pipes in this corner where Opila normally is, but we'll get into that in a Minute. Whenever I was developing the game, I was talking to some friends about some stuff that they've seen in horror games, and we kind of came to the conclusion that some of the scariest moments in horror is when you're in a confined space and you don't know what yeah. else is in there. So I decided to implement a crouch mechanic, which wasn't in the base game, which would allow us to guide the player into the pipes and go into different rooms looking for the eggs for the egg minigame. Is Opila in here? Oh, scary bird. <laughs> something about the darkness and having to navigate this area with just your flashlight, and then something about like this weird lighting, it's all really creepy yeah, and I'm very happy with how it came out in such a short amount of time. With all this laid out, I worked on the egg mini game, which I'm not going to go into the details of it. But basically, instead of dumping the eggs into Opila's mouth like in the base game, I just let the players put the eggs in a basket because that seems a little bit less like strange. Once you collect all six <laughs> eggs, a vent opens to the That's right, which allows you to open up this door in the classroom. I, of course, added a ton of extra details in this area as well. So if you guys play the game, do me a favor and check out some of the signage. I had a lot of fun making it. But if I'm being honest, there was something missing missing from this area. Sure, it was all friendly and nice and then got scarier once you got into the tubes, but it felt lifeless. So I hit up my friend Seek to help me compose some music for this area. Within a day, they had this really cute little theme similar to the daycare center from Security and whoo, it was a banger. just set that up so that you can hear it whenever you're in the area and then whenever you walk out of that room it fades away the farther you get very nice let's get back to that key card you got from the ag mini game obviously that's gonna unlock the door in here and normally in the game you can find a hammer that lets you take down some planks of wood but i got a little bit spicy a little bit creative <laughs> my brain was so massive i changed it to a screwdriver very nice <laughs> but you can now use this screwdriver to unlock vents which means yes you're gonna be crawling through vent shafts so once you crawl yeah, through the vent shaft, you're gonna thing. fall into the new ball pit area which oh, in the original play. game i thought was a little bit strange i mean right here it says ball pit but then you get here and it's just a deep void and there's no like lore explanation as to why there's nothing in the ball pit it's just an endless deep pit this thing's scarier than the twitchcon foam pit why is it in a kindergarten at the same time though i feel like it's an iconic part of the original game so i think i came up with a solution for this what if this area was a new expansion to the main play area so I added a ton of scaffolding, a ton of boxes laying around, make it look like it's a work in progress construction project. I also made sure to add a bunch of the tubes from the original playroom so that it looks like you could crawl from the original to this one. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Now, normally this is where the Opila chase sequence happens, but I kind of wanted to change it up in my version. So for now, we've added platforms similar to the parkour section of the second game. I know everyone's favorite part, but the idea is that once the pits filled up with balls, kids will be able to jump on I and off those platforms, play off. around on them. So they kind of make sense in this context instead of just, you know, floating in the second game. Hier, das hat mir auch gesehen kurz. Wir haben ja Spiel auch gespielt. Er hat irgendwie weirde Texturen auf seinem Plattform. Ich glaub, oh yeah, I also made my first Absicht. cutscene in this room. Hä, hab ich dir schon gesagt, mein Spiel ist abgestürzt. Hui! Bonk. Dude, get me on the next Call of Duty! <laughs> on the other side of the pit, there's another vent that you have to crawl through hiding under some scaffolding. And this will take you to the final segment of the game. For our chase sequence, I had this idea of running down a bunch of halls in a school running from Opila. But because we're working on a strict deadline, I decided to make a quick maze using a bunch of walls and posters. And yeah, that looks like the back room. <laughs> 
Not intended. I promise you, not intended. You're not running around the back rooms. But again, if this video does well, I'd love to do an update to the game where I actually flesh out this section instead of making it look like the back rooms. Now that we got the whole map laid out, let's talk about the part that you guys care about, the characters. I've already showed you the redesigns for Jumbo Josh and Opila, but unless you're scared of furries, these things aren't gonna be scaring you. So we did a lot of brainstorming on how we can make these characters look scary. And in the lore of the first game, it actually takes place in 2016. And originally, I was just gonna follow the same plot. But what if something bad happened in 2016? What if the entire facility was left abandoned in 2016 and the events of my game happened in 2023? This would mean that there would be seven years between when the building shut down and when you're actually playing the game. So what if these little science experiments that were helping the kids and looking pretty were left alone in a facility with no food scavenging for seven years? Poor Jumbo Josh would be left in a dark room for seven years. His body would begin melting away and deteriorating, but because he's not a natural life form, he can't die. So we redesigned him to quite literally have his face melting off, which das is kind of terrifying. Das then our pretty bird Opila. Of course, she's running around the top floor scavenging, looking for anything to eat. And similar to the original game, we love the idea that she's stalking her prey. So throughout das the entire game, gesehen. you'll find her kind of lurking around corners and trying to hide from you until she finally snaps and is ready to eat your flesh. Because of this, she appears a lot more unlively, starving, bruises all over her body, blood on her beak. Yeah, she's kind of terrifying. We sent these designs over to my friend Slushy and within a couple of days, we had fully working, rigged and animated models. And I thought the best way to get these guys into the environment would start with the first appearance of Opila from the original game. In the original, whenever you walk up to this corner, she kind of just loops around. And I thought this would be the perfect starting place to test if I could code something like this. And uh, yeah, it works. Something about being in the darkness and shining a flashlight on this thing Thing makes it so terrifying. I use this technique of having her be around a corner and then turn to hide from you a couple times in this chapter. I won't spoil them all, but I think it's pretty successful. The other time we used Opila was at the end of the game during the chase sequence, and I had to code up a pretty basic AI. I won't go into the details of it, but basically she just finds the player and chases her around the maze. Awesome. It works. Slushy made an awesome run animation for it, so it works fine. Then with Jumbo Josh, of course, in the base game, you only see him for a couple of seconds whenever he goes to push over your elevator for some reason, which ends up crushing him in the second game so like good move bro yeah, so we decided at the end of the chase sequence you're gonna fall through the floor while trying to escape and down there in the pit with you is jumbo josh now there's probably a hundred more things i did for this project from the little notifications in the corner to guide the player to opening up notes to making those notes and writing them all out the list goes on and on forever but for the sake of this video i decided to invite a couple of friends on to show you guys how the game works it, it already looks better than the original bad man menu godson of bad man here we go. All right. Thanks to the guy that made the 90s computer. Thanks to the guy that made... <laughs> I got to go through each one. Well, the lighting is... So so many cool. are gar nicht. Huh. That really like makes it look... Oh, that looks so nice. Maybe it was so dark. Eventually, I had a eingestellung I had a eingestellung. Eat fruits and veggies to grow strong. Oh man. Yeah, did you make all this art? This is beautiful. Um, the majority of it, yeah. Like the that. two posters there, the drawings on there, I had a friend do just for time because they're better character yeah, artists than me, but I did the posters, yeah. Very impressive. And it's, I mean, it's, it actually looks like a scary kindergarten, not just actually a kindergarten. This is uh, me when I'm, uh... <laughs> uh -huh. Barely see over here. Maybe I get a flashlight. I, I, I do. I do get a flashlight. Is that a flashlight? There we go. Oh, it's a terribly weak flashlight. Perfect for a horror game. Oh, a little cardboard cutout. I love it. It's adorable. The tiles really make it feel like uh like a backrooms kind of thing. There's a kitchen back here. It actually makes sense. Holy. Okay. Holy shit, the bird. Okay, that is way scarier than natural. I'm pretty happy with that design. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dude>. <laughs> <laughs> the model is like so good, it's actually terrifying. Oh, hello. It's a pillow bird. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Your pancreas is mine. Hey, chicks, welcome to my nest. Whee! Oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, this is great. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. Rise. Oh, you can actually see them. Holy, already improvements. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, can we go in here? Oh, oh, sick, dude. Where are we going? Oh, shit. Yeah, this is a new area. 
Uh, I had a buddy. So much more gameplay. Uh, yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> I could gar nicht rein. True. Come, I just did a few runs with the it's... first chapter. Like mm -hmm. when I first played it, I then played it for another hour and a half to get like I don't know what I had, like a four thirty. This section alone would force it to be longer than the original chapter. Yeah. You see, this is what happens when you actually put time and effort into a game. Crazy, right? And this was made in one week by someone with no game dev experience, which already speaks volumes. Okay, that is <laughs> fucking <laughs> creepy. <laughs> that is real <laughs> ominous. Come on, you're asking me Hi! <laughs> okay, yeah. You ever thought of, uh, you know, serious game dev? Because that was good. Oh, what's this? <laughs> oh, burn! Oh my god. Okay, I like that too. Let's take a look. Let's see over here. Are those eyes? Okay. I think it was nice. Back off. I should turn around. <laughs> I see John Hech gruselig aus. Gerade der Kontrast für den mind. dunklen Charakter und die hellen Röhren. Pretty bird, 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 pretty bird. Okay. Nope. Screwdriver for the vent. Yes, thank you, prompt in the corner. Bird, pretty 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 bird. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, this is this is very much a recreation. I thought you just like switched out some textures. This is a whole other game. Yeah, and I like it because it maintains a lot more of the playful kindergarten. I will auch erstmal hochgehen und gucken, ob man da reinkommt. It's just like here's a chasm. Ich glaub nicht. Yeah. And these weird platforms that come out of the ground, but like this is actually like like if I was a kid, I'd love this, you know. That's true. Right, right. Kind right. so gern, obwohl jetzt so eigentlich auch gern mal zum Pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird. <laughs> I didn't even notice these. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much more interesting than the first game. The original game. Jetzt ich das noch mal mit Pretty Bird. So much, there's so much more to this. I love this. Uh oh. Oh, we fell into the back rooms. <laughs> Oh, we fell into the back rooms. What is this? This is the back rooms. Oh. Insert lore here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh my god. That is still, like, actually terrifying. Yeah. Oh, shit. Nice. This way, okay. Run. All right, we're running. We're doing this. We're going. Who are you? No idea. Who are you? <laughs> Slow. I kind of lost my way here. Oh, made it. Oh shit. <laughs> the smack. Oh my god, he's handsome. Go to the door. You got it, Captain. Oh, okay, we're falling. Wee! Oh. Oh, it's Jumbo Josh, bro. It's Jumbo Josh, bro. <laughs> He's real big. Oh, that's it. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. Didn't know you can get stuck there. Interested. Alright, I did not know that you could get stuck there. Can you like not move? No, I could. I was just trying to get it. I see, I see. Intentional game design. Oh my god. He's terrified. What did they do to you, Josh? That was actually good. I actually enjoyed that. Oh, I'm really just a fan of the But for what the material was to work with, we have an update to play, but maybe a little bit smoother or a few mistakes to improve. Like I said, there's not much, but in terms of copying what they had, I feel like it was a fun little time, you know? I can't believe you did it in a week, too. It kind of puts him to shame. 
Make sure to support Unique Geese on his YouTube channel as well as the original project, Gartena Ban Ban. So yeah, what I had a blast making like? this game. I went from zero knowledge in game development or Unreal to a fully playable game that you guys can download down below. Keep in mind, it's gonna be scuffed. It's gonna be buggy. Bro, I whipped this together in a week. It's hanging on by the shoelaces, dude. And again, this project wasn't meant to like one-up the Euphoric Brothers or anything. I genuinely want to see them succeed and I hope they continue to take criticism and make their games even better. But this was just a good excuse for me to finally take some time to learn game development while also making some content for the YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. This took a while. Thank you again to Slushy Seek and Pincer Prod for helping me with the development of this game. It was a blast working with you guys. And for now, I'm pretty happy with it. But if this video does well and you guys ask enough for it, I would love to go ahead and do an update to this that expands out chapter one a lot more. And also, I wouldn't mind touching a chapter two. Now, keep in mind, if we do a chapter two, it's going to be completely different from Garden of Ban Ban 2. The last thing I want to do is make it look like I'm making a free version of a paid game. And again, you should go yeah. support That's the official piece. Piece. But I have a lot of ideas about how we could use characters that haven't been seen in the base. Yet, how we could adapt the world to something a little bit more interesting in my style. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So if you guys want to see that, stuff, down below. Let me know what you guys want to see going forward. And thank you for watching. I überlegt, das hat er alles in einer Woche zusammengeknüppelt. Schon faszinierend. Und wer wollte nicht schon ein eigentlich Spiel machen? War auch cool. Er hat ja die, die Idee von dem Garden of Bam Bam genommen und hat sie halt in seiner Version gemacht. Er hat sich natürlich inspirieren lassen. Kannst du nicht drüber reden, wirklich, aber es ist echt cool. Beide Spiele sind ganz cool. Es ist halt Garden of Bam Bam ist für mich halt kein Horrorspiel. Es ist wirklich mehr so Parodie. Mir kann keiner sagen, dass das ein ernsthaftes Horrorspiel sein soll. Das ist eine Parodie und das ist jetzt das äh, Reincarnated ist jetzt mehr wirklich, äh, ja, was wenn es doch ein Horrorspiel wäre? Sowas in die Richtung. Ja, war ganz cool. War, fand ich funny. Fand ich, fand ich gut. War interessant. Also das Garden of Bandman fand ich ultra lustig. Ich hatte sehr viel Spaß. Und auch das Spiel war echt cool. Es war schade, dass es so kurz war. Es war schon ein bisschen... Das, das war ein bisschen doof. Das muss er verbessern. Aber dafür... An für sich war das ja cool. Wir hatten ein paar Stellen, da waren Meshes nicht gut aligned. Und äh, bei der Drohne sind die Faces inverted. Das sind so kleine Fehler, die passieren halt. A, in der Woche ist das halt schnell passiert und B, ist er halt mit, mit null Erfahrung reingegangen, ist halt, das ist schon viel, der hatte Dedication, der, der wollte das, 